Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Oh, I'm over here killing my plan already. Okay, today our video, my video is going to be about budgeting. And I'm going to be doing the Kikibo method. Or Kikibo? I think it's called Kikibo. I'm not 100% sure. Basically, it's a method of actually writing all your budgeting down. I have a main book that I write my uh, fixed expenses, my week-to-week -week expenses, and this is my little helper that I use for when I'm running around and I just purchase something real quick, whether it be the gas station, gas, coffee, teas, lunch with the girls, lunch with my boyfriend, what have you. And so I just write it down really quickly. So I'm going to go over today about budget. Um, I already wrote it down. Obviously, I didn't fill in any of the blanks because it's my budget and my income and it's none of y'all's business. But here we go. So I wrote the budget and then I wrote income and I wrote total. So of course, income stream can be whatever. Checks, uh, I don't know money from different hustles, side businesses, etc. Now my fixed income is my rent, my phone, my internet, my insurance, my electric, and uh, credit card savings. Now of course, oh shoot, sorry. Of goodness, of course your uh, car insurance, electric bill fluctuates. Mine fluctuates from winter time of, I wanna say anywhere from 60 to $50 to 90 to 100 during the summertime. And so I did put that in the fixed category. And when I say fixed, I mean just stuff that recurs every month. Sometimes for people, when you say fixed, it just means prices that never change. So after that, I always go on the side of my proof of my budget book profile. Oh, and by the way, I did also get some of the ideas from this book, not only from the Kikaibo method, which is a Japanese method of saving and writing down and stuff. I also found a book on Amazon for, I think, $6.88 or $5.88. I can't remember. And I took some of the stuff out of that book and put it in here also. And um, I might buy the one from Amazon, but right now I'm being cheap and I already had this at the house. So I just wrote budget book and then Kikaibo method on it. And so... Uh, after the fixed expenses, my goal is to save $100 for this month. And then what I do is I go week by week. So I break down each week. And of course, like I said, when I'm out and about, I write down for whatever I spend that day on here. And as I sh do it here, I wrote down, I don't know, let's see. Like one day I got coffee for me and my boyfriend. And I wrote... I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm sorry. My writing's atrocious. But I wrote down eight something for coffee. And I put social. And then the next day I got gas. Or it's probably the same day actually. But the next day or the same day, whatever. I got gas. And I uh, wrote that as a need. Now in the Kibo or Kakaibo method, it's uh, social, I think, fixed expenses, wants, and then unexpected expenses. Like medical necessity bills. I don't know if your kid breaks their leg or your dog gets sick or your cat gets sick or whatever just expenses that aren't always coming in you know what I mean they're not fixed and they're not recurring and so what I do is I like going through the week and I break down everything I sp oh my goodness sorry I thought the ring light would help so I go through every week and I go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday so if you see on Thursday I put drinks I put 48 bucks and I put social because realistically, drinks isn't a need, it's not an unexpected expense, it's not a necessity. And then the next day, I bought $11 on cups, which I got me and my boyfriend a cup, which I like them. They're like little camping cups, and they keep stuff really cold, which, I don't know, some would say in El Paso, Texas, it's a necessity, which honestly is to keep cold drinks, but you know. And then I just go through the whole week, and I'll add in the days where I spent the money. Now, the reason why this method is supposed to be more efficient is because you're physically writing it down. Now, of course, a lot of my bills are automated, so I don't have to sit there and, and you know, mail off stuff, go there, pay it, whatever. But it's still good to write it down because then you know after all your fixed expenses, what comes out later on. And then of course, you also should add in your laundry and things like that that you tend to forget, especially if you don't have a washer and dryer in your apartment you have to go out and pay for washer and dryer in quarters or some places have a little swipey card things. So you can just swipe your card now, which is kind of cool, but, and they don't charge a convenience fee. So anyways, I put that on. Sometimes it's fixed income. Uh, sometimes you don't put it in as fixed because it fluctuates so much. So it's just how you want to do it. Um, I didn't put food because it's not really fixed income for me. 
And so I go through each week, like the week after that, right? So then I total out the week. So let's say the next week, right? Uh, we were in Rio Doso and I spent $13 on like chocolates this lady made, okay? Well, that's another one, that's not a need. And then Tuesday, I spent $7 on tea, which is another is another uh, want. I think I have a problem with outside drinks. I've been doing better, I swear. This month, I've been doing really good. I've only bought one takeaway coffee, or whatever you call it, outside coffee, to-go coffee, whatever. So anyways, so that week, I only spent a total of $20. So at the end of each week, I tally it up. And then I go from there, and then at the end of the month... I put how much I spent, how much I wanted to save, and I go from there, and how much I went over my budget. And then i just been doing that for each month. I just started it, I did it last month, this is the second month. Um, I've had budgeting before, but they're usually been on the computer where I just go into Microsoft and I do, um, I don't know, whatever the PowerPoint thing is, I don't know, you guys. So, but I read about this online, I, I looked into it, and I honestly think cognitively it's a little bit more Mm, it helps more because I know when I have to write something down one I'm lazy and I don't want to write it down and then two it's like uh do I really need to get that because I've got to write it down and not only do I have to write it down then I realize hey you are spending this much on teas or coffees or hey you are spending this much on lottery tickets or I don't know hair stuff whatever you're getting and so it makes you think more like hey why am I spending so much on this stuff which leads me to another point sometimes the reason why people don't budget well it's not only because they don't know how to budget and they didn't learn it growing up, it's because they're running away from something. Sometimes we tend to spend to alleviate stress, boredom, uh, internal problems or internal struggles. Just like if you work out too much, if you eat too much, if you fornicate too much, if you go on shopping sprees, instead of, you do it to avoid the actual issues that's eating you. You know what I mean? There's a saying that sometimes people who eat to live live to eat or it's um it's not what you're eating it's what's eating you you know and that can go for anything it doesn't always have to be food you could work out too much because you want to run away from your problems you could be at work too much if you're a workaholic because you don't want to deal with the internal issues that you have with yourself uh past traumas things like that sometimes people go shopping because they want to feel financial security um there's people that will spend their way to feel financially secure because they grew up poor or whatever, and, and you're like, oh, if I can buy all these things, if I have all this stuff around me, I'm not poor, I'm not broke. And, and by doing so, can make themselves broke because they're going under, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, you spend so much money that now you're having to use credit cards to actually pay bills because you spent so much of your money. So it's, it's a kind of a, a vicious cycle. And I think that internally, some people do have spending and budget issues because of the internal issues they're having with themselves and because they don't want to deal with those internal issues they rather go shop it or eat it or work it out or work too much at work or whatever have you to deal with those issues and to not let me rephrase that to not deal with those issues they will do these other things so sometimes budgeting is just yeah i don't know what to do i didn't grow up learning budgeting i didn't see parents that saved money i never had to do it and so you really got to either be, you know, honest with yourself and say, hey, is it just because I don't know how to save and I didn't learn this from somebody? Or is there some internal issue that's causing me to be this way? You know what I mean? And um, now, of course, if it's the first part and it's you really don't know how to save and stuff, I know this is going to sound horrible or whatever you want to call it. Save $10 a month. I know it's not a lot. I know it's just, oh, my God, what's $10 going to do? But if you save $10 every single month, that adds up over time. And of course, if that's too little, then you can start saving 20, then you can start saving 30. And there was this one book I read where it was like, save a dollar a day to become a millionaire or something. I, I can't remember the title anymore. But before I got out of the military, I decided to do that, where I saved $10 a day. And literally, you can find $10, you know, if that was a guy's mindset, you can find $10 anywhere. So that's what I did. My thing is though, sometimes that can be a little daunting for people. So I always start off with baby steps. I save $10 a month then jump it up to 20, then jump it up to, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60. And if you want, what you can do, if you don't want to, um, if you're not good at saving and you have it connected to your checking account and you constantly pull out the money, what you can also do is put your savings account into a whole nother 
go to a federal credit union, open up a savings account with somebody that's cheap. Don't do it with the big banks because they always charge too much. My bank threatened to close out my account if I didn't keep adding money to it. So go to a federal credit union, do something different where you just have a savings account. And what I would do is I pulled out the cash. So I physically did not have it in my checking anymore. And I saved that up. Now, of course, I have a savings account. My money goes directly in there. And I'm pretty good with not touching it. Like, I've never touched it, actually. So I'm good with it. But if you're not, pull out the money in cash. Put it into a separate savings account with a completely different bank. Or pull the money out in cash. Keep it in an envelope. And put it, bury it somewhere <laughs> inside your software so you don't think about it. When stuff is out of sight, it usually becomes out of mind. You know? And so... Um, if it's that, then, you know, start baby steps. Always do baby steps and make sure that your necessities are necessities. Like with gas, my gas is a necessity. When I had it on the list, I had to get it. And obviously in some countries, gas is not a necessity. In America, it is. Unless you live in like New York or maybe LA or San Diego. When I was there, the San Diego the transportation is pretty decent. Now, of course, if you're overseas, it's awesome. When I was in Korea, uh, I love the transportation system. It ran very effectively, very efficiently. I want to say every 10 to 15 minutes a bus was coming, every 10 to 15 minutes a train was coming. And it was nice because you could go out with your friends and get tipsy and then come back on a train or a bus. And not have to be struggling with an Uber or all the million other little pitch posh things we do here in the States. Of course, I'm not saying get drunk, I'm not encouraging becoming alcoholics, but you know, it's nice to go out a night out with your girlfriends or your friends or whatever and not have to worry about transportation and it's cheap and effective. Now, of course, don't be the stubborn Americans that drink like six, seven drinks are like, oh, I'm still good to drive. No, please get an Uber. <laughs> we do not uh, condone drinking and driving on this channel. Please get an Uber. But if you are the lucky people who don't have to worry about gas every month, yay for you. But since we do, that is a necessity. I would definitely average it out. What I did is I did um, two, mer two months worth of tracking my gas, and then I did an average. So like with my electric bill, okay, it used to be anywhere from 50 to like 120. So I averaged it to about 75 or something like that, you know, because it fluctuated so much. Now with the gas, you can average it out, but it's still always gonna fluctuate a little bit. So you always gotta make sure you have a little wriggle room for your gas or your, you, or your needs in general that fluctuate, like your electricity or if you pay water, things like that. And then at the end of the month, obviously you tally up what you spent, what it was, the categories that it was on. And then if you've made your savings goal, if not, how does that, you know, like what did you do wrong this month? Or not wrong, but what did you do that didn't get you towards your goal? You know what I mean? Because we're not going to be young forever. Let's be realistic. And saving up is always important. And people always look at me like, oh my God, $10 isn't anything. $20 isn't nothing. But it's 10 or $20 you didn't have the month before. It's 10 or $20 you're gonna have for the future. And then of course, when you get enough money, start investing in it. I've been actually thinking about EFTs, so I think eventually once I do invest in those, I will let you guys know how that goes. But a lot of the times, I think that a lot of our budgeting or our spending habits don't necessarily have to do with us not knowing how to budget. Sometimes it is, but a lot of the times, it's a combination of not knowing how to budget and you having a lot of internal issues you have not dealt with. You know, whether it's past trauma, current trauma, um, growing up seeing spenders also, because that doesn't help, and just not really dealing with those issues and instead finding other ways to cope or even boredom. If you're bored, go volunteer. If you don't like people, go work at a library helping restock books or something. Volunteer for that or volunteer at an animal shelter or go make sandwiches for the homeless and go pass them out so you only have to deal with one person. Now granted, I know it's COVID, so wear a mask if you wanna do that or don't do it yet. But if you're shopping because you're bored, there's tons of other outlets to where you feel a part of a community and to where you can actually help people make a difference. So you're not just blowing your money and putting yourself in the debt and also still feeling bored. Because as soon as that shopper high goes, or as soon as that hit of endorphin from working out or eating that sweet or we're overworking overtime because you're making more money. Remember, you guys, life isn't all about money either. Of course, you want to have enough to be financially secure so you're not stressing. But don't spend your whole life working either because in the end of the day, your job's not going to be there. It's your family members. And with the little bit of time you probably spent with them and attention you gave them, they might not be there either. So think about that stuff. Family, community, spending time with each other, helping each other is way more important than your next dress or your next pair of shoes or your next, I don't know, knife set or your next coffee set or tea set or whatever have you. 
And if you really are struggling with internal issues, then really work on them. Find out why you are spending so much money. Find out why you need to constantly buy something to feel better. You know, was it financial insecurity when you were younger? So you're constantly surrounding yourself with things and buying new things to show yourself that you can afford these things now and you'll never be poor or broke again? Is it boredom? Do you like the shopper's high or, you know, whatever have you, you know, and why do you constantly need that high? You find out those internal issues of what's bothering you to cause you to do this. Now, of course, if it's just regular budgeting issues, which of course some parents haven't taught their kids, try the Kakaibo method, look it up as a Japanese method. It breaks it down into categories. And then, like I said, just do your fixed incomes. Sorry, let me do the one word. Thing. Do your fixed expenses, your income, your total. Do the budget of what you want to save for the month. My goal is $100. And then, um, like I said, go week by week like I did, weekly what I bought and how much, which is, hold on, which is this one, I did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I tally up each month, each week, and then at the end of the month, I tally it all up, and I see how much I spent, where I overspent, why I did that month, you know, some months you might even spend more than other months because you might be stressed out or a little bit anxious. And other months you might save like crazy. Like next month, me and my boyfriend are doing a challenge where we're not doing any eating out and we're not um, buying any alcohol either. So we're trying to really stick to 30 days of no eating out. Like this month, we've done really well. We've only gotten a pizza and some fries or something. You know, so we're really trying to cut back on those things so it can help further our financial goals. Plus, honestly, when you eat out a lot, you get like addicted to eating out and then you don't want to stop. I mean, of course, I really do like eating in, but just even the little quick snacks here and there because you're so like you miss that fast food taste or you miss the um, I'm assuming the fat, the salt and the sugar they put in everything that makes everything taste so good. You just miss it. And then, of course, this guy is a lifesaver. OK, because sometimes I have actually second thought purchases. I'm like, man, I'm going to get my book. I'm going to have to write down what I bought. I'm going to have to write if it's social, want, or need, or an unexpected category, or uh, an unexpected expense, sorry, not unexpected category. And then, of course, you have to sit there and, like, write it down and write what category it goes in. So it's like, uh, I don't want to do it. So this actually has helped me. And then they also say, like, I guess cognitively, because you're writing it down, you are remembering better and it's actually going to help you keep track of stuff more. And it's going to also make you think about your purchases more. So if it really is just spending habits and you've gotten the habit of overspending, this will really help because you're physically having to write it down. You're not just sitting in front of a computer, typing it in and stuff. You're actually sitting there and writing it down. And I've liked it so far. And like I said, I did do uh, budgeting before, but I kind of fell off of it and then I'm starting back up again. And yeah, so try this method. You can just get a little composition book or you can go on Amazon. I, I want to say the, that one budget book was like 588 or 688 It's very cheap and it has similar, like I said, I took some of the Kakaibo method and some of that book and put it into this one. So you'll have both methods to work on, you know, and then just start keeping track of your expenses. Um, and then go from there. Do your income, do your fixed expenses, do, you know, some of your wants if you need it. I, I don't know, like, hair products for me is a need. It's not necessarily a want all the time because I need hair products to keep my hair shiny and healthy. Um, so sometimes other people's needs look different from the average need. Obviously, rent or mortgage is almost everybody. Uh, car insurance if you have a car is almost everybody your phones almost everybody um, Electricity for sure is everybody because you can't do anything without light um, if You have to pay for water And then just go for after your fixed expenses go to a food I'm over here just forgetting food food is a fixed expense like these are certain things that are reoccurring that you always have to do no matter what and then of course like I said if there's other reasons why you're spending maybe you really need to look into that and figure out what's ailing you. Why are you needing to spend so much? Was it past trauma or present? Is it because you grew up poor and now you want to prove that you're not poor to yourself, the world, or whatever? Um, is it because you're bored? Is it because you're sad? Is it because you have slow self-esteem? You know, you got to dig into that, which isn't always fun. You know, sometimes it's easier just to do the fun stuff or do the stuff that numbs whatever issues you're having so you don't have to deal with it. But really dig into it. I hope this helped. I hope you guys will try this method out of handwriting stuff. I know it's so ancient. 
but I really like it. I've noticed I enjoy doing the fixed income and I like doing the weekly little um, writing it down because it also keeps me accountable because if I wait the whole 30 days to write everything I spent down instead of doing it week by week, I've noticed that I don't stay as accountable. So I really do like this method. And yeah, like I said, with the gas, things like that, you can average them out if you want to or really just write down week by week how much you spend on gas for a couple months and then average it out or just keep writing it down every month. I mean, regardless, gas is going to be a need. It's not a, it's not a want. For most people, it's a need just to get to work, get to school, all that stuff. So I hope this was informative. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.